In this video, I forget to remove mold lines. Hello everybody and welcome to this painting video with myself John. In this one we're going to be tackling a battle mech from Battletech. We are doing a Shadowhawk from the Game of Armored Combat box set, which is one of the starter boxes available for the game. And we do a lot of contrast work on this, we do a lot of washes, and uh, we make a nice simple colour scheme with a few poppy contrasty sort of um, uh, details as well, just to make it stand out a little bit. But anyway, let's get stuck in. So the first thing we're going to do on the Shadowhawk is uh, do the base colour and the camouflage. Now the base colour and the camouflage are both going to be contrast paints. It's not going to matter too much if we let one coat dry before we start the next, but we're going to do that anyway. So the contrast paint first is Griff Charger Grey, and we're going to be using that for the base colour over the entire body. So I'm just going to open this pot up here, put some onto my brush, and... Uh, We'll just put some onto the palette here as well. We're going to go fairly heavy with this. Um, what uh, what we have here is a base coat, actually. I forgot to mention the priming. Uh, the model was sprayed with um, Mechanica Standard Grey, and then it was dusted over with Grey Sears. So there's a few shadowy areas in there that the uh, contrast paint will like and, and hopefully work for. So we'll get this Griff Charger Grey down. So with the Griff, uh, Griff Charger Grey now down, we're going to let it dry. We're going to make sure that we've got every spot that we want. There's a couple of places there I've immediately missed. So Just before it dries too much, we can just go in there real quick and uh, check it out, make sure there's nothing major. That's okay. Even if we have missed areas later on, we can go over that once we're starting to apply the uh, the camouflage scheme. So once this is dry, we'll come back and start applying our camouflage. With the Griff Charger Grey now dry, we can have a quick look around our Shadowhawk and see how it's turned out. And I think the results are pretty tidy. We get all that lovely panel lining all in there. We're getting a bit of shading where we need it. A couple of fades here and there and some of the lower details and stuff like that. So yeah, it's worked as intended. Uh, which is great. So the next thing we're going to do is move on to the camouflage pattern. So for that, we're going to be using another contrast paint, which is Space Wolves Grey. And because this color is fairly similar to the Griff Charger, what we what we will end up getting is sort of a modeled uh, two-tone camouflage here. And it does look very interesting. A few of you that have watched one of the Weekenders will have seen me showing uh, the test mini off for this and uh, deciding that this is what I wanted to go with. So I'm just going to put some onto the palette here and just make sure there's enough on the brush. And to apply this, I'm just going to pick out areas and just start to apply it in a bit of an uneven, kind of patchy sort of way. So we are vaguely drawing uh, camouflaged lines and stuff like that, but we're not going to be making it too tidy. Sort of just a little patch here and there. And just let it do whatever it wants to do. I'm not worried if it goes into any panel lines, if anything, it's only going to accentuate them more. But because the deeper part of the areas are all uh, the Griff Charger Grey, it's not really going to change the panel line colour very much at all. So what we're just doing is just adding some patches of this, letting it do what it wants to do. We'll take that one down onto the foot. And even if it starts to pull in areas, again I'm not too worried about that because we're going to be dry brushing over this and that's going to help accentuate the modelled kind of look that I want to go for. Now that the camouflage is dry, we can have a quick look around and see what we think. Like, right now, yes, it looks a little patchy in places, a little bit uneven, but uh, the next few steps ought to uh, make this look a bit more like the modelled scheme that we're aiming for. So the next thing we're going to be doing is a dry brush, and the dry brush is going to be Gorgon Hide. That's from the Army Painter range. And... <clears throat> 
put some of that down on the palette, don't need too much. What this is, is basically an off-white, it's kind of a bluey off-white, so it plays nicely into the, the palette that we're uh, establishing for our Mac here. So we're going to get a dry brush, and if I slide this to the side, I'm just going to... I know a lot of people use a piece of paper, but, you know, when you don't have a piece of paper right to your hand, you do this. So let's get as much of the paint off the brush as we can there. Add a little bit more. So from that stage, what we're going to do is start to dry brush. And we're going to be looking at basically doing a top down sort of light touch here because I just want to highlight upper edges and start a little bit of this blending and lightening of some of the areas. And what this does nicely as well is catch edges and, and so on and so forth. We can change direction a little bit here just to get some of the other areas. And I find that I've, this isn't the first one I've painted in this scheme. I've painted a few in this scheme already. And what you're going to find out is a lot of in, in a lot of my painting, you'll see that it starts to look worse before it looks better. Now at the minute, this is actually looking okay, but in the next step, I'm going to make it look awful. And <laughs> it's it does come together. Trust me. So at the minute, if we just added, if we finished this dry brush, added some metallics and um, shaded them down and did the canopies and stuff like that we would have a pretty decent looking Mac. Now the problem is the basing that I've went for is warmer than the palette that um, this Mac is currently painted in. So it's it would look a little too stark in its current form. So that's why there's going to be a couple of steps here that are going to make it look pretty ugly and then bring it all back together and uh, make it look like it's actually in the environment that I've uh, based my my other Mac on or the other Max even from the box set that I got. So we're trying to match what I got in the um, a Game of Armored Warfare box with what I've done for the Clan Invasion set. And uh, they're kind of a deserty kind of look. And this scheme isn't really conducive to um, fighting in a desert. So what we have to do is use or utilize our weathering to make this mech look like it belongs in that environment or has been in the, in that environment. Not necessarily painted for it, certainly not painted for that environment. But what we're going to end up with is quite an interesting looking finish. And now we're going to move on to a wash. And this wash is going to go over the entire miniature. And you are really going to think this is, this is a silly move, but we're going to go with some Agrax Urshade. And that's because the basing on this miniature is quite warm, or will be quite warm. And this is going to be a twofold thing of tidying up our panel lines, but also adding a bit of warmth to this already very cold looking scheme. So with any luck, we'll be applying this all over the miniature. And when we're done, we'll uh, get onto the weathering. This is technically sta stage one of weathering uh, before we've moved on to any other colors. But we're going to give the entire Mac a coat of this. Not just as heavy as that, but we'll move it around a bit. And once we have this done and it's dry, we'll then get on to the next stage of weathering, which will be some paint chipping. With the Agrax now mostly dry, it's still a little wet in some of the deeper recesses, but that's good enough for us to be able to move on, we're going to start working on some paint chipping. And for our paint chipping, we're going to be using Vallejo uh, Panzer series. This is German camouflage black brown. It's quite a nice dark brown. So get some of that down on the palette. And we're going to be using the sponging technique for this. So if you've not seen sponging before, I'm going to put a bit more on there. Basically, if um, you guys have ever bought stuff like... Um, blister packs and stuff sometimes there's a little bit of this gray open cell foam or you know broad cell foam or whatever you want to call it uh that would be in the packaging save this stuff up and uh when you go to do some paint chipping and stuff particularly on these smaller models you can tear a little piece off 
make the facing of it or the piece that's going to touch the miniature a little uneven. Get a little bit of paint, something like this stuff here. And what we do here is it's a little like dry brushing. You want to remove a fair amount of the paint off the sponge again before you start applying it to the miniature. And when you go to apply it to the miniature, you want to be very delicate. Or you don't have to be delicate, but you know, it's just there. You can do it that way if you want. And all we do is dab that sponge on uh, panel edges and stuff like that. And what you get is this uneven, non-uniform-esque kind of weathering to symbol, uh, to replicate the sort of paint that's been worn and chipped over time. And this is the base layer for this, so we're going to be doing this in a couple of stages. Um, but this is the only one that's going to require the sponging, so we're going to sponge away here. Pick out some areas of uh, particularly high wear, so we're looking down the, the lower legs, along the knee joints, and picking out panel edges and stuff like that. So anything that would have taken a lot of thumps, you know, because these mechs will walk through walls and all sorts of stuff. And because I'm trying to paint them as a sort of an older uh, scheme, you know, it's not been touched up that much, lets us go a little crazy, pick out quite a lot of areas for some visual interest. So that is basically what we've done. So we've just darkened it a little bit, added that chipping. And uh, the next step we're going to do is work on highlighting it. And by highlighting it, we're going to be using Army Painter's Shining Silver. It's a nice uh, aluminium kind of bright silver. It's a very smooth metallic. It's one of my favorite metallics out of the Army Painter range. And then we're going to take a pretty small brush. So in this case, I'm using a double zero. I'm just going to get that. And then the areas of highest wear, like where the paint chips are very big, what we're doing then is going in here and just accentuating some of those areas with a little bit of our silver. Again, we can do this as much or as little as we want. I always find just adding it unevenly in certain locations just really gives a sense of weight and realism to the whole thing. A bit too much paint on the brush there, so we'll remove some. And this is probably one of the slower processes in weathering on the miniature. So we're just going to continue this off camera, but I'm going to do enough just to show you the idea. Getting some of these raised areas with that little bit of silver. And what it's doing is letting the eye get drawn to these areas that have a bit more weathering on them and going, oh yeah, I can see that that was an older chip, but it's a, a frequently a frequently abraded piece of the mech. You know, it's, you know, maybe it's just on the edge of a joint or on the edge of a panel that would receive a lot of bumps and scrapes just through general wear and tear. And that attention to detail really helps scale the miniature and make it look pretty imposing, even for something as, as basic looking as a Shadowhawk like this does look. It starts to look quite heavy when you have all of this uh, kind of detail going on here. And the more careful you are, the better your result is going to be in the end. but I always try to focus it in the areas where the chipping has become particularly heavy. So up here on this edge of the shoulder. So just a little bit of patchiness there. But that's what we're going to be aiming for across the whole miniature. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And when we come back, we're going to be looking at picking out other metallic areas. Um, in fact, no, sorry. 
I will move on and do that off camera as well because it's just it's another base coating step and for that we're going to be using uh, some lead belcher from Citadel and we're going to be using that to pick out our weapon barrels and uh, joints and stuff like that anything that is a darker metallic uh, so when we come back that stage will be done as well and we can look at what our next stage will be so with the bright silver chipping done and the darker metallic which was lead belcher done uh, let's have a look around the miniature so mostly in the joints for the the lead belcher uh, just a few mechanical parts picked out uh, while all the chipping has been finished with the uh, the higher silver and um, we've got the laser weapon here on his arm that's also been done and the end of the muzzle of the cannon on its shoulder so a couple other things that I did uh, off camera in the on the canopy glass I've used a bit more of our Gorgon hide and just painted that in by doing very thin lines uh, I didn't want them to be totally even uh, I think once we put the, the coloration down on that, it'll look a little a little bit more interesting. I didn't take it all the way out to the edges either. I wanted the darker edges to re remain there. And the next step now, well, sorry, I also did a, bit, a little bit of basing. Uh, this is just Armageddon Dust. That's the texture paint from Citadel. Just put down, moved around to give me a little bit of a patchy sort of uh, earth there and... Uh, Later on, I'll be putting some pigments on that. I'm not too worried about going in depth into the basing because you guys will be basing your stuff whatever way you like. I just felt that, or I feel that when this miniature is complete, it needs to be in its full context. There needs to be basing material down with the pigment work as well to show you what I mean about trying to blend what is quite a cold color scheme into something that's a bit more deserty looking. Uh, so anyway, from that point, we have a couple things to do. First off, we're going to get my contrast Magos purple and I'm going to put that into the canopy glass because I like having this higher contrast color for the glass it really makes it stand out and lets you see where the cockpit is in the vehicle and um, yeah we're going to see how that looks and I'm just going to get a small brush here and just get into it so I'm get make sure I'm in focus And just a case of carefully running that contrast out to the edges. Like so. That looks alright. And then on the top. Needs to be a little heavier in there. Just work it out to the edges. Let the Gorgon hide just make that centerpiece a little bit brighter. There's plenty of ways to do this. There's tons of tutorials that I've been looking at on uh, different methods for doing the, the canopy. And um, I kind of like this way because I don't want to be spending a lot of time doing um, reflections and stuff like that. I just want a bit of a color in there. And it's a great way to pick a color that is contrasty against the rest of the color scheme. So that's basically all I'd be doing for the canopy, really. You guys can go ahead and do more complex stuff if you feel like it, you know, because I've seen plenty of really cool tutorials on blending and stuff like that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is darken down all the lead belcher areas, which are our mechanical parts rather than our chipping. And for that, we're going to be using a bit of null oil. And this is almost us at the last stage. So we're going to get our null oil here. And just a bit too much on the brush there, so we'll move that around a little bit. Just swizz it around all these mechanical parts. Let's make sure we're being careful with it. A bit too much on that weapon. At the back of it. Make sure it gets into the panel line too. And this is really only just to shade it down a little bit. Uh, chances are we're not going to highlight this either. We could highlight it. In fact, we probably should highlight it, but I don't think it necessarily needs it. I'd rather it was a dark metal that, again, works with the contrast of the brighter um, paint chips and stuff like that. 
just to give us another layer of something else going on beyond this bright silver that we have all the paint chipping on. So we don't want to go too over the top when working on the metallic parts. So we'll just continue this. There's not too much of this to do on this model. Now, that is basically the Mac complete because we don't have any real visible lasers or anything, no real lenses to play with. So what's going to happen now is we're, that, that was a really weird way of pronouncing it. What's going to happen now is we're going to wait for this to dry. Once it's dry, we're going to give it a coat of matte varnish. And for the matte varnish, I've started using this AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish a lot more in some of my projects, particularly my Battletech stuff. And uh, we'll give it a coat of that. I'll put some pigment down onto the base and that'll basically be our Shadowhawk done. So, in the blink of an eye, our mech will be finished. And here we have it, we have our completed Shadowhawk. And I quite like how he's turned out. I'm pretty happy with uh, how that matte varnish has settled. And um, yeah, in general, this is just a very tidy looking mech. And I really like how even after the matte varnish, that silver chipping is still very prevalent, as well as the darker chipping surrounding it. Uh, the canopy looks fine, and in general, just quite a good-looking mech. That's why I picked it to paint, actually. I quite like just the the pose and the, the shape of the mech. I used uh, AK Interactive Dirt and Dust Deposits. This is the brown earth one. So that was put down it's a fluid dropped a few bits of it there let it dry took a dry brush and started to swipe off some of it again so we got a little bit of texture a little bit more interesting texture on the base i think that's the way i'm going to go with the rest of my battle tech stuff but in general this is a good looking mac and it is ready to go and get some sea bills or a way to fight the clans probably more than likely a way to fight the clans because that's the other faction I have. So, in general, very happy with this one. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as well. Maybe picked up a couple of things that you might want to try for yourself. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you all again very soon.